Hello everyone, welcome to another Scilab session on digital signal processing. In today's lab, we're going to talk about how to implement your FIR filters using frequency sampling design. So, uh, if I would, uh, you know, the, if in our lectures on frequency sampling design using FIR, we have seen or we have derived this equation that we see here h of n is equal to 1 upon m g of 0 plus k equal to 1 to m minus 1 by 2 g of k 2 cos 2 pi k by m n to n plus alpha. So this is the equation um, that you know gives you your FIR uh, with the frequency sampling rate of 2 pi k by m. So this is the frequency sampling rate given here and uh, this is a symmetric filter because you have a cos and for your anti-symmetric filter you have a sign so that is the only difference and your g of zero is zero for your anti-symmetric because at position zero your positive and the negative cancel each other because for anti-symmetry the first half of the signal is equal to the negative of the second half and at g of zero your plus and minus cancel so g of zero is equal to zero and the rest of the terms are the same except for your cos is now signed here. Good. So these are the two uh, expressions I have uh, solved in the class for your um, FAR frequency sampling. And now uh, in today's Scilab exercise, I have done a numerical. So we will try, you know, we'll try and implement this numerical. So the numerical is uh, h of 2 pi k by 15. So let me just zoom this. So h of 2 pi k by 15 is given. And that is given to be 1 from k equal to 0 to 3. And that is equal to 0 0.4 for k equal to 4. And it is equal to 0 for k equal to 5, 6, 7. And your m, the filter order is 15. So which means it is from minus 7 to plus 7. So that is the symmetry we are looking at. If the symmetry is about 0, if the symmetry is at g, g of 0, which means it extends from minus 7 to plus 7. So your... Um, what are the steps we are looking at? So you need to compute your g of k because that is what you have in your FIR equation. So the relation between your g of k and your h of 2 pi k by 15. So these are the frequency samples. So the relation is minus 1 to the power of k. Good. So I am going to do this first in my Scilab code. And then I come to the implementation of this. So once I have my g of k, then I just have to plug in the values. So the values I have are g of 0 to uh, g of k. All the values are here for. So now let's uh, get to the Scilab program. So I will uh, retain this slide. Okay, I slide. I'll keep this slide on for me. Yeah, so this I need to just show you so that you can correlate to this. So this is the code. I am just uh, uh, clearing my workspace variable, clearing workspace. Okay, so that is the first thing. And defining my FAR filter order, m equal to 15. And then what do I have? Finding my gk or g of k from h of 2 pi, right, k by m. So here m is 15. So I'm gonna use this formula. And that is what I am doing. So for my k equal to 0 to 3, I have it as minus 1 to the power of k into 1 because my h of 2 pi k by 15 is 1. And for my k equal to 4, so this is, uh, I would say that is from k equal to 0 to 3. And then this is for my k equal to 4. And that one is for my k equal to 6 and 7. Okay, so once I have my g of k computed, then the next step would be to implement this equation for h of n. So I'll be doing that here. So after this, I'll be going to step 2. So this is my step 1. Step 1 of my... Uh, I want you know go to correlate it with our theory class. So this is step one and that is step two and then I am having uh, what do I do? Yeah, I'll just start my counter uh, equal to one and then uh, let me initialize H So this is uh, just uh, initializing H 
H H of N. Okay, then um, yes. So coming to this, this is the main loop we have here. So let me just get rid of this line. I don't need this line now. So I it. So then coming to this line. So this is the main program. So this is the program that I have for my step two. I'll get rid of all these lines for you. Yes. Yeah, so what do I have here? So what look, uh, let, let us look at this equation. So I have two. So I have to set two count two uh, what you call two conditional loops for my K and then for my N because M is a constant of uh, 15 and my G of zero is fixed, right? So I'm so that is uh, the same regardless of what the value of N is. So I have just set two counters or sorry not uh, two loops here uh, one for my count and that is my n so this count uh, so the cn uh, cnt count is my n variable is my n variable so that is my count and this is my k and you see this equation here so i'm doing this uh, two this is the summation so what i have here so that is my summation so a summation in the FIR frequency sampling equation. Good. So this is your two star GK plus one uh, because I don't have zero index. So I'm starting from one to four. And then I get here, when I get here, this is going to be my G of one. Right, because the index is from zero, so but I don't have this, so this is like this has to be from two, so it's always plus one because uh, the uh, the derivative indexing is from zero to m minus one, that is zero to 14. But in actual scilab, I don't have that zero index, so I have to do it from one to 15, so which means I have to make this to be k plus one, and here I'm just using it as k because that one to 15 applies only for the indexing, right? So the indexing happens only within these brackets. So these are the these are what I call as indexing, this count plus one, k plus one, all these are called as the indexing or the position of the value. So G of one means I'm talking about the first element in my array. G of two, I'm talking about the second element of my array. So that, uh, you know, the arguments within this brackets explain or give the position of the samples. Inside my cosine, however, these arguments stay as it is. So K and count, I'm keeping as it is because it's from zero to M minus one. So I'm going to use that here. And then I'm uh, keeping the uh, index to be count plus one and K plus one. So I do this for K equal to one to four. I'm doing this for K equal to one, four, one to four because my, what is my M minus one by two? My M minus one, by 2 is equal to 15 minus 1 by 2 and what is that that is 7 but my fifth sixth and seventh terms are zero are zero so i don't have to do it from 1 to 7 i'm just doing it from 1 to 4 so only so only taking four terms so that is visible in this slide if you see K is from 1, 2, 3, 4. I expanded this and I'm showing you G5, G6 and G7 to be 0. Okay. Good. So that is the program. So this is the code. So this is our code. So this will compute the summation. And then after I do that, what is left? I have to add my G of 0. And that is going to be G of 1 because the indexing 0 is equivalent to 1 in my scilab. So I'm... I keep telling this because that is where most of the troubleshooting or most of the debugging happens. You know, you get, you make mistakes only when you when you convert this equation to this, you put it as G of zero, and then uh, you get index or bound error, and you substitute just K here and here, and then when you do that, you are never going to get the right answer because it has to be K plus one. Your indexing has to be proper in order to get the right output. All right, so if you don't do that, you will not get the right answer. So this. 1 by m is what I'm doing here and then plus g0. So here this line is taking care of that g0, adding g0, right? So in that uh, expression, from expression, 
I'm doing this G0 plus. That part is done here, and then I have my 1 by M. So 1 by M bracket. So this is what is happening in this equation. And then after I do this, I run it, then I'm going to get my outputs. So let me just uh, redo, I think, fresh output. Okay, so this is my fresh output. This is my H, which is obtained here. And now let me just take you to this problem. So this is a numerical in the textbook uh, of uh, Prokis of uh, Digital Signal Processing 4th edition. And if you see here, you have this one point for exact same question and they have done the computation and they have given you these values. And if you see this H0 to H7, that is what I have here. So it is match. It is matching very, very, I say, the last is 0.1. So you have to just match these answers and the mode. And that is exactly what is happening. And now I can tell that this is my H of 0 and that is equal to H of 14. This is H of 13, H of 12, H of 11, so on because of the symmetry. So here if you see the realizable symmetry is from 0 to 14. It is not from minus 7 to plus 7. Why is that? Because of the non-causal. Good. So minus 7 to plus 7 makes your you know, response, your FIR filter unrealizable because of the non-causality. So if I make it from 0 to 14 by multiplying, okay, you know, you know we have seen this, I'm not going to discuss the step, but that is why we are using it from 0 to 14 because it's a causal and stable FIR filter. All right, so this is the program. So this is your frequency sampling program uh, for your FIR design. I ho hope it's clear for you. And now um, this G of K computation, no, it's given, it, 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 it basically depends on your H of 2 by K by 15. So in this case, it's given to be this. In next question, it may be different. So according to that, you may have to modify this part slightly, but this is uh, pretty much the same. You know, what will change is, if I'm giving it as an anti-symmetry, then you just have to change this cost to sign. So I'll, I'll plug in this equation. So this is my, this is the equation I have. This is for my symmetric and even, right? Sorry, symmetric, what I'm, symmetric and odd. M is equal to 15. So that is an odd number. And then what if I have an anti-symmetry? So if I have an anti-symmetric FAR and my M is equal to, again, 15, I get the same equations, right? I get the same term here, except this cos is going to be now sine. So this is my anti-symmetry and that G of 1 won't be there. So G of 1 is going to be 0. So I have to put that somewhere because if you go back to the slide, I'll just to show that and we'll uh, finish this program. So for your anti-symmetry n equal to odd, if you see g of k to pi, so that is what I have done here. Okay, there is a negative sign. So it's because of the anti-symmetry, I get a negative sign. So uh, what do I do? So I, it is on the outside. So I can just put here a minus sign. So for my anti-symmetry, so this is for my symmetric or right and then for my anti-symmetric anti-symmetric or what do i get i get my h is equal to minus one star h upon 15 so i don't have that g of zero here i just have to do this all right, so I'm just going to comment these because I'm just keeping it for you to do. I have but the best, the problem that we had solved today was for symmetric and all. Thank you.